Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel Oxide Magic and it's Jordan here and welcome to our latest Deck Tech Tuesday video. So what deck are we bringing this time? Well we are bringing you 4 colour metallic Eldrazi for standard. Now I joked about this obviously in our my little rant video uh, in last week but I decided you know what why not build it. So obviously this deck revolves mainly around two cards interacting. The first one being the card I heard the most which is Winding Constrictor uh, which is a solid two drop for a two three. Uh, basically if creatures would get a counter of any description they get a bonus one and if the player gets a counter of any kind he also gets a bonus one. And the other card that we revolve around is Metallic Mimic, another two drop. It's an artifact creature that's a shapeshifter and it's a two one. Um, as it enters the battlefield, you get to choose a creature type. Generally, in this case, we always choose Eldrazi. And then the Mimic becomes one in, in addition. But also, not only that, you any other creatures that enter the battlefield of the chosen type will end up coming in 1-1 one, one counters. Now, obviously, with the snake on the field, it means they get double, which is rather useful. So, from this, we then start going on to the creature basis. Now, as this is Eldrazi, well... As this is Eldrazi, we are using quite a few. So let me begin with the first three drop, which is a Scion Summoner. It's for two and a green. Um, when it ends the battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one Scion. Um, but it's also a 2-2. Two, two. So it's rather sweet, rather good. We then got a three off of Catacomb Sifter. It is a 2-3. Uh, when it has a battlefield, you get another Scion. But the benefit you get now is that whenever another creature you control dies, you get to Scry. Helps you filter the top of your deck quite nicely. We then go on to having a 2-off of Flare Drone. This is my own brew. This is where I've gone into. And uh, he is for 1, a black and a red. And he's 3-1 with first strike. Whenever another colorless creature enters the battlefield and you control, your opponent loses one life. We then have Eldrazi Displacer. Now we're only running a single off copy because we're not trying to. Use, we're only splashing for the ability. Um, he's for two and a white. He's a three three. He's obviously a colorless creature, and you can pay two and a glass or two and a colorless to exile another target creature and then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Uh, basically, it gets us more scions. It allows us to go wider. It can remove tricky blockers. There's many many good ways that you can use it. We then have three Eyeless Watchers. This is for a three and a green. It is a 1-1, one, one, but it enters the battlefield and you get two Scion tokens. Uh, again, rather useful uh, for a sideboard strategy that we'll go into later. We then have Single Thought Not Seer uh, for three and, a, three and a colorless. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand and you choose a non-land card from it and they exile it. And then when Eldrazi... Uh, thought not here leaves the battlefield you get to uh, the your opponent gets to draw a card generally you just use for control strategies general removal of board wipes etc etc we then have reality smasher as a two off um he's a five five with trample and haste and for four and a glass and whenever reality smasher becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls you get to counter it unless that controller discards a spell Benefit of him, he's a big 5 5 with haste and trample, and so he can start smashing in. Generally, if you're playing him on curve, you would ideally have got the Thought Knot out and then into, into a Reality Smasher. Then the last Eldrazi we are running is a single off of Ulamog of the Ceaseless Hunger. He's a 10 10, big daddy, and when you cast Ulamog, you get to exalt any two target permanents, lands, enchantments, artifacts, creatures, whatever you want. And whenever Ulamog attacks, the defending player exiles the top 20 cards of their library from the game. So then, very useful. So to complement out and to finish off all our creatures, we are running two off of Rishkar Pima Renegade. The benefit of him is that when he ends, he's for two and a green. He's a 2-2. Two -two. When he enters the battlefield, I put one 1-1 one counter on up to each of two target creatures. And then each creature you control with a 1-1 one -one counter with a counter on it can tap to add green mana to the mana pool. Helps ramp out the uh, helps ramp up the Eldrazi to get Ulamog out a bit a couple of turns earlier, which is rather nice. Then we have Walking Ballista, full play set of. It's for XX or whatever you want to cast it for, and Ballista, Walking Ballista will enter the battlefield with X 1-1 one -one counters on it. Obviously, again with the constrictor out, you get double. You get an extra one, sorry. 
Um, you can then pay for and put a 1-1 counter on it, but the benefit you now got is that you can remove 1-1 counters to deal 1 damage to target, creature, or player. So we have a lot of good synergy in the creature basis. I mean, lots of ramp strategies, as well as severe damaging. Walking Ballista you'll tend to use as board wipe, or sort of picking off damage. It generally works quite nicely. Uh, moving on to the spells, we have a 4-off of Traverse the Uven World. Benefit we have with this is a sorcery. You can search for a basic land. This is for colour, so you need colour fixing. Uh, but then if we have achieved Delirium, we end up being able to search for a creature or a land. So then again, it can help us go search for answers. And because we're quite creature heavy, we tend to have quite a lot of answers in the deck. We then move on to having a single copy of Cryptolith Right. This card again is just purely for helping with the ramp. You know, suddenly you don't need to worry about having Rishka. All your creatures tap anywhere for any colour. <coughs> and then we have one off of Pan Harmonican. Four off artifact. Whenever an artifact or a creature that enters the battlefield will cause an ability to trigger, you get uh, two triggers instead. So again, all the Scion token generators would end up going off twice, which is again very useful. And if you got Metallic Minute on the field, you would end up triggering that twice as well. So things just get a bit crazy from there. So general strategy with this deck is go wide. Um, go wide and get get big as soon as possible. Um, you can generally do, but benefit with having the flare drones in is you get a bit of drain action, which is rather sweet. So moving on to the land, we start off with having two ruins of Oran Reef. Um, it's a utility land. It's good for getting the it's good for getting the coolest mana. But not only that, you can tap it to put a one one counter on target coolest creature then into the battlefield this turn. So if you've got the Constrictor out, you can give two plus two plus two counters to creatures entering the battlefield. Well, to one creature, sorry, entering the battlefield. We then run a two of Ether Hub. Uh, this is just general uh, colour fixing, but it can also be energy generation if you've got the, if you've got the snake out, because you get an extra count, you get an extra energy. We then run a four off of Westvale Abbey. Um, this is, again, a utility land for getting colourless mana, but not only that, it can, can generate bodies. And because we are on the go-wide strategy, it's actually very easy to flip it into Omondal. Um, and then suddenly you have a 9-7 flying, gaining out of life. Um, generally works out quite nicely. We then have a two-off of Blooming Marsh. Um, green, black, fast land. Nothing much else to say. We are green, black, heavy in this deck, so it's generally useful. We then have a one-off of Forboarding Ruins. Um, just general to help us try and speed up on the red black uh, on the red on black, and then we have a one off a small drink marsh. Um, again, just useful for black red. We then also to help with color fixing and help with delirium for traverse the oven world. We have three evolving wilds. Um, again, as I said, this is mainly just help with delirium and general things like that. We then run a four off of forests, a one off of swamp, one mountain. One plains, and more importantly, one wastes. Because you generally need the wastes, ideally, for if you're struggling to find a utility land. So, pretty much that is the deck in a whole. Um, it goes wide, go big. Um, generally quite fun to play. Um, moving on to the sideboard. This is where we get all the interesting options for whatever you want to play as. Uh, the way I've built mine is uh, some creature is some control, um, but some would generally with removal in. So to begin with, uh, we start off with a full play set of Fatal Push. Uh, this obviously allows us to remove creatures that are two, ma two mana cost or less, but it does have a Revolt Trigger on which allows you to kill something that's four mana cost or less, and because we have a lot of Scions, we can enable Revolt quite easily, even on the opponent's end step. We then run a two off of Harsh Scrutiny. Um, sorcery allows your opponent to reveal hand and you choose a creature from it and then that player, player discards a card and then you get to scry one. Uh, generally is very useful. Uh, it gives you information on the opponent's hand, not only that, but if you're going up against creature-based strategies, it allows you to uh, counteract it quite nicely. We then run a one-off of Lost Legacy. Um, basically, this is designed to remove, um, I like to use it to remove other snakes uh, from my opponent's decks and stuff like that. It generally works out quite nice. 
We then run a little creature package. Um, we run a one off of Brew Monitor. Uh, this is a six drop for four and two green and a three three. But when it ends the battle, you get three Scion tokens. So it again, helps you go wide. We then run a one off of Zulaport Cutthroat. Uh, it's a two drop for one and a black for one one. But whenever it or another creature you control dies, you uh, your opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So again, it's on the drain strategy. We then run a one-off of Pious Evangel. This is for two and a white. When it when it or another creature enters the battlefield and you control, you gain a life, which is rather sweet. Um, you can then pay two, tap it, and sack another permanent. That is permanent. It can be anything you want. You then get to uh, transform it into Wayward Disciple, which whenever it or another creature control dies, you get to drain your opponent for one, and, and you gain one. So it's a Zulaport trigger, but... You get the benefit of gaining lots of life to begin with and go down that route. We then ha run a 3 off of Fort Not Seer. Uh, benefit of that is just uh, to go up against control strategies, uh, just generally knock things out of their hand. We then run a 1 off of Distended Mindbender. Um, it has, it's an 8 drop, but we generally cast for its emerge cost, generally killing an Eyeless Watcher. Um, because it will then only cost one and two black. Uh, but whenever you cast Descending Mindbender, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose from it a non line card with converted mana cost three or less, and a card with converted mana cost four or greater, and that player discards those cards. Um, again, if you've got Paramonic amount at this point, it becomes rather funny and awful at the same time, because it means that they can generally got to discard four cards then, if they've got them. And the last sideboard card we run is a one-off of Worldbreaker. So for six and a green, he's a five-seven with reach. Um, benefit of him is a when he enters the battlefield, you get to exile target artifact, enchantment, or land. So you can generally screw up their their method somehow. Obviously, it doesn't hit a creature, unfortunately, but you know these things can't have everything. Uh, but then you can pay two and a colorless and sack a land, and you get to return him from the graveyard to your hand. So late game, you can get him back. It's rather useful. So, in terms of strategy, this deck's really fun to play. It's designed to go, obviously, go round and go big. Um, you know, after sideboard options, I will say that I tend to bring in the Fatal Push a lot more because it is a good, it does get round a lot of decks, you know, so maybe they're worth mainboarding. But the benefit with Metallic Eldrazi is that you can build the deck how you want. I've seen red, blue, uh, red, blue, green builds. There's many, many ways you can do it. I mean, the benefit, I would say the two cards that you key need are Wine and Constrictor and Metallic Mimic. And then just putting your favourite colours from there. Uh, the benefit you've got with Eldrazi is there's a lot of strategies with ingest and um, entering, you know, and removal from ingest as well. Stuff like that. So have a play around, see what you guys think. And uh, yeah, leave comments below if there's any other builds of Metallic Eldrazi you were thinking of. And uh, just so we can swap some ideas. So... I'd like to remind you all to remember to like the channel, uh, subscribe as well, and at the end of the video, in the end screen, there will be the video link to our current giveaway, which is going to be given away on the 31st of the month, and uh, yeah guys, thank you for tuning in, and uh, catch you guys later, bye bye. <laughs>